The thick ascending limb reabsorbs about 25% of the filtered sodium load. That means for an average daily filtered load of 25,000 millimoles, 6,250 will be reabsorbed along the thick ascending limb, half by the transcellular roots and the other half by the paracellular root. Transcellular reabsorption occurs by two independent mechanisms. The more prominent of the two is the sodium-potassium 2-chloride co-transporter, or just NKCC2. The other is the sodium hydrogen exchanger, or NHE3. In addition, sodium reabsorption along the thick ascending limb leaves the osmolality of the luminal fluid hypoosmotic relative to the interstitial and plasma osmolality. This is because water is not reabsorbed along this segment. This is why the thick ascending limb is often referred to as the diluting segment. The NKCC2 co-transporter, which is located exclusively in the thick ascending limb, uses the sodium concentration gradient to transport one sodium, one potassium, and two chloride ions across the apical membrane into the cells of the thick ascending limb. After being transported into the cell, sodium ions are transported out across the basolateral membrane by the sodium-potassium ATPase. Chloride ions passively diffuse out across the basolateral membrane through chloride ion channels. Most of the potassium ions passively diffuse back into the lumen across the apical membrane through potassium ion channels. Blocking the NKCC2 co-transporter, the chloride ion channels, or the potassium ion channels, will lead to a reduction in sodium reabsorption along this nephron segment. Doing so will decrease the interstitial osmolality required for the reabsorption of water along the descending thin limb and collecting duct. This increased excretion of water by the kidneys is referred to as diuresis. For example, furosemide, a loop diuretic, decreases sodium reabsorption along the thick ascending limb by reversibly inhibiting the NKCC2 co-transporter. Furosemide is routinely used to treat water retention associated with congestive heart failure, cirrhosis, and kidney failure. The relevance of the NKCC2 co-transporter, the chloride, and potassium ion channels in the reabsorption of sodium along the thick ascending limb was discovered, in part, by studying mutations involving the genes that code for this co-transporter and these ion channels. Mutations in the NKCC2 co-transporter and potassium ion channel result in neonatal barter syndrome, while mutations in the chloride ion channel results in classical barter syndrome. Barter syndrome is characterized by polyuria, polydipsia, alkalosis, hypokalemia, hypercalciuria, hypermagnesuria, and normal to low blood pressure. Polyuria, or excess urination, occurs because the decreased sodium reabsorption reduces the interstitial osmotic gradient required for water reabsorption, which is a contributing factor in the associated low blood pressure. Hypokalemia, or low plasma potassium, occurs because of decreased potassium reabsorption by the NKCC2 co-transporter. Because of this, potassium supplements are commonly administered alongside furosemide. The hypercalciuria and hypermagnesuria, in other words, increased urinary calcium and magnesium, occurs because of a decrease in the lumen positive potential, which reduces the driving force for the paracellular reabsorption of calcium and magnesium ions as well as sodium ions. The alkalosis, or increased plasma pH, is a compensatory mechanism due to the hypokalemia. To restore plasma potassium, cells secrete potassium ions in exchange for hydrogen ions, which then increases the plasma pH and results in alkalosis. The sodium hydrogen ion exchanger, or NHE3 exchanger, represents the other transcellular route for sodium reabsorption along the thick ascending limb, which is similar to that found in the proximal tubule except for two important aspects. First, the water generated in the lumen from the conversion of carbonic acid is not reabsorbed by the cells of the thick ascending limb, since they lack water channels. Second, bicarbonate generated inside the cell from the conversion of intracellular carbonic acid is transported out of the cell by the basolateral chloride bicarbonate exchanger, or AE1 exchanger, and not by the sodium bicarbonate exchanger, which is found in the proximal tubule. Lastly, about 50% of the sodium reabsorbed along the thick ascending limb occurs by the paracellular pathway, 
which is driven by the lumen positive potential. The lumen positive potential is established by the presence of the potassium ion channels in the apical membrane. It works because the positively charged luminal fluid acts to repel positively charged ions like sodium, calcium, and magnesium, forcing them to exit the lumen across the tight junctions into the interstitial space and ultimately the vasorecta or peritubular capillaries. In conclusion, 25% of the filtered sodium load is reabsorbed along the thick ascending limb. Half is reabsorbed transcellularly and the other half is reabsorbed paracellularly. The NKCC2 co-transporter represents the major transcellular route, while the NHE3 exchanger represents the minor transcellular route. And finally, the lumen positive potential established by the presence of the apical potassium ion channels drives paracellular reabsorption of sodium, calcium, and magnesium ions.